G'day, hey, hi, and welcome. Okay, this is uh, going to repeat again. Uh, if you're going to pick this kind of a genre or whatever, it always pays to specialize and uh, do some research. So let's say you want to become a motorcycle photographer. Well, it's kind of uh, already covered uh, becoming an automotive photographer. What you'd probably do is you're going to be looking around for magazines mostly that and talking to editors or whatever to see if they actually accept the, uh, you know, because a lot of these magazines have their own exclusive photographers, but sometimes they're open to uh, freelance photography too. Uh, so it's one of those things you'll have to, you know, turn over a lot of rocks. The biggest problem you have getting hired as a photographer is that nobody, it's kind of a non-existent job really, because it's, every, it's so freelance. Everybody's such a freelancer, you freelancing photographers, uh, that... Uh, nobody really gets a steady employment very very rarely very rarely that happens um so if you want to get into these kind of things you got to kind of find a niche for it uh, the best thing to do is go to bike shows and stuff like that get your get your photos there these are my bikes i just thought i'd throw them in there uh some of the some of the photos are coming up are just about you know photos of of, of my older bikes and so that just to share it with you but the thing is is uh, to get the uh, the money shot, so to speak, uh, some of the problems you might run into again is is with basically advertisement and, and copyright. So when you're trying to uh, take these motorcycle shots, the logos of whether it's like the the uh, the brake caliper logos or the, the the tank badge on the side, anything that can be picked up. Uh, by the uh, editor might be considered, uh, you know, advertising, uh, whatever. There might be product placement there, as as they say, and that could, you know, hinder hinder it a bit. So make see what the guidelines are before you start snapping shots of everything, putting a lot of work in. Uh, before you uh, put a lot of work in, and end up, uh, you know, not getting anything out of it. But the best places would be to basically talk to editors from motorcycle magazines that type of thing if you can find a friend that has a kind of a custom motorcycle like my this is my, my motorcycle here it's it's a bit of a custom it's a one-off so you know you could do a motorcycle story and, and and send it out to several magazines which with this bike i'm actually probably going to do uh don't know which uh magazines i'll shop but i'll just you know send them in the photo and here's my bike here's some glam shots of the bike and here's a little write-up and i'll see if that works they might take it they might not uh, sometimes you know it doesn't have to be that spectacular of a motorcycle sometimes it's the story behind it uh, uh, other areas where you might be able to use uh, photography strangely strangely enough will be like nature magazines and adventure travel magazines where they might want to hear your travel story of how you rode this specific motorcycle across from quebec to uh uh, BC and you went you know or whatever you, you know your trip through Banff National Park or Drumheller or maybe uh, you know Grandmore Grandmore National Park or something like that and, and and people might be interested in the story and if you have the photos to back up the story this is where you could use some of your you know biker magazines and stuff like that where you can use some of these shots and there's so many genres there's scooter magazines uh, Scooter girls always seem to be very, very popular for some reason uh, in, in, in magazines. You'll always see like a shot of a scooter with a, you know, some pretty girl and it might be like a lipstick uh, advertisement or whatever. But usually those shots, the, they paid that photographer to get that shot. But sometimes if you have that shot ready to go and if you're mindful of logos and stuff and you can hide all the logos, sometimes you can shop that to, to photo stock agencies and whatever. So just things to keep in mind. Uh, it's one of those genres that uh, there's people that do it as a job that are hired by these magazines and the competition is extremely fierce like you would imagine amongst because there's just so many photographers out there so you really have to do pre present something quite unique uh, and if you could do that well then maybe just maybe you might uh, this is one of my old bikes here um, the maybe just maybe you, you might be able to make it as a you know photographer this is the same bike years earlier that's a photo of a photo bike basically but you know the stories i could tell about this motorcycle um 
it never did end up in like say Iron Horse magazine or now it's called the horse or whatever but it could have at one point you know if, if I would have uh, sent it in one of my friends uh, we were talking uh, talking about his bike that ended up in Iron Horse magazine I rode with those guys as me back in Daytona Beach and, and stuff like that but the, 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 the point is is that uh, if you take pictures and you can put a story to the picture uh, the animation, this is me again, uh, mo if you have a model in there, even if you're the model, this is me, my, the first motorcycle I ever sat on, uh, my uncle's, uh, but if you do have a story and you do have a model, for example, I would sign my own model release after having this photo taken and I'm basically the photographer or whatever, and I, you know, a photo like this, you're not really focusing just on the bike, but you might be focusing on the story behind the bike and that that could get you somewhere so just just little ideas for you good luck to you uh i'll leave it at that so have a great day eh?